Hey y'all, today I'm gonna be working out in the front and the side and the backyards, and I'm going to be pruning different plants for the summer. Summer perennials, summer annuals. And so I'm gonna take you through which ones I'm pruning and how I'm pruning them, just so if this is a cleanup that you need to be doing in your area, you know what to do. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up, and make sure you drop me a comment below. How's your garden doing? Mine is barely holding on. <laughs> These temps are insane. I've lost a whole lot. Some areas look really great, like the front yard looks really good. Um, and it looks really good from far away, but once you get up close, you kind of notice that there are a few issues hitting us. So I'm gonna start with the coleus over here. If you guys remember, I planted some Proven Winners coleus. Um, Sedona Sunset, and I forget what the other one is. I'll have to look it up. I, I forget what it is. I'll put it up on the screen. There's one, here's the other which is beautiful, but it has started trying to bloom. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in here and I don't grow coleus for the flowers. Like you can leave these. I mean, this is super pretty. I mean, get, don't get me wrong. That looks gorgeous, right? Really, really pretty. However, you can come down here and you can very easily just pinch below a flower. So like if I come and I pinch right here, you can see between these two leaves, it's gonna give me two new stems coming off of that, right? So I can just very easily pinch like that flower is gone and it will give me more. However, I am going to go a little bit lower. You can see if I come down here, we've already got some more green coming up um, from between where two leaves uh, meet on the stem. So I'm going to cut down a little bit lower, at least six inches on some of these shorter ones and at least a foot on some of these taller ones. So let's go ahead and get that first project knocked out. Okay, I think that cleaned up real nice. You can see that I took it down quite a bit, especially back in this area. This is better for the plants right now. It is hot, hot, hot in our area, y'all. And bloom production is really hard on plants, especially something like coleus. So coming in and pulling off these blooms and you break it down there right at a set of leaves, right above a set of leaves, and that's gonna produce more. So actually all of this is gonna come back fuller and more gorgeous which is great. And coleus is a fast growing plant, so it's going to do really, really well. So I'm glad I got that done, taken care of. You can see I had quite a bit. The pollinators were not happy that I was cutting all those up, but there'll be more flowers very soon. But while I'm here, I want to talk about my mums. So here's one of my mums right here. 
I've also got some over here. Now, <clears throat> this season has been very, very dry, so I actually have not received any bloom cycles from my mums yet. I do have some over here that are just barely beginning, but truthfully, it's so hot and so hard on them right now to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut this back by a third. I know y'all are like, that's insane, Amanda, it has blooms, don't do it. I'm not ready for this to bloom yet, y'all. Um, I'm ready for, I want this to bloom. Typically, this is when I would cut back the first bloom round, and then I would get another bloom cycle for the fall. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a cut back for now so this can start prepping itself for the fall. Because if I wait too much longer, it will not grow flowers back for the fall in time. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. Okay, so it doesn't look pretty, <laughs> but it's what's best for the plants. Everywhere I cut, it's gonna send off two branches and it's gonna be fuller and lovelier. The bloom cycle I was gonna be, was about to get is not gonna be very pretty. It's been so dry um, and it's really been struggling. Like I said, I would have already had blooms on these two months ago, but it's so dry. So anyway, this makes it easier for the plant to sustain life at this point, and it will begin working on more blooms for the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut some over there. If you can see them peeking out right back there, I'm gonna trim those down as well. Okay, next we're gonna start on this red spirea that I've got back in his area. I actually haven't pruned him in a couple of years. So I'm just gonna shave him off the top. I'm not gonna do really hard pruning. I just have some scraggly areas that don't look as great. And I really feel like the shrub could use a little bit of refresh. So let's knock that out. Okay, definitely gave it a nice haircut. You can see it frees up 
what was going over on over here with the hellebore. Makes room for a bunch of celosia that I got going back there. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of shaping. Took out a lot of dead branches, and I think that was a good call. Now I also have a white salvia here, and I was thinking about trimming it back, but truthfully, still have so many flowers and pollinators. I think I'm gonna leave it for right now. I think it looks pretty. And I think the pollinators are really enjoying it. So let's swing over here to my maiden hair fern. You see it all right there? It's all browned, struggling. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that back. I'm gonna give it a good haircut back and it will flush back when um, temperatures are a little bit cooler. Okay, so I didn't cut it up back as much as I thought. I ended up just dragging my fingers through it and pulling out a lot of the dead fried leaves. And I think it looks a ton better. So really happy with how that one's looking. So let's work around the side and see some areas that we can also trim back. All right, check out these zinnias are looking beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Just give you a size on these blooms. Absolutely beautiful. Loving them. Gofrina's looking really good. The Kaleomi is looking beautiful. Over here, I have some Penstemon. I don't know the variety. And it bloomed a long time ago, but now we just kind of have like these seed head situation. So I'm actually gonna cut these seed heads back. I don't know if I'll get another cycle out, but now that they're leaning so far forward, it's just taking up a lot of space and covering up other plants. So let's go ahead and give that guy a trim as well. Okay, that looks way better. They were just leaning so far over other plants. I would have loved to have left them throughout the whole season. But when they start interfering with the dahlias and such that are growing here, I just, yeah, I just decided to move them. I think in the future, I really need to try to maybe like cinch them up together so that they don't flop as the season goes on. I did want to show you over here the explosion grass is, I guess, blooming. <laughs> looks so cool especially mixed in with these purple prints zinnias so fun I can't wait to design with those this area is looking fun my butterfly bush I had cut back pretty hard and a lot of times at this time of the year I go and cut it back at the base because it really starts has shows chlorosis but it also gets um, spider mites real bad so I am dealing with that. I have some lilies in the back that I think I'm gonna allow them to go a couple more weeks and then go from there on that and then I'll trim them back. I will say that the bunny tail is starting to bloom over here, which is fun. Looks good. Had some meteor showers verbena come back from seed, I guess. So I actually haven't had it in a couple of years, but you can see several little seedlings coming up, which is looking really nice. I already gave a pretty hard trim to all of these petunias over here and basically just waiting for them uh, to survive. That's the goal, just to survive the season, 
usually I pull them out at this time and you guys told me this year, don't do it, just cut them back, see how they do. And hopefully they'll come back in full bloom for the fall. But let's go over here and talk about balloon flower. These are my balloon flowers right here. Um, they make these beautiful purple flowers and they start with almost like a little balloon pod. Let me see if I can find one that hasn't bloomed out yet. Oh, there's one. See that guy right there? See, it looks like a little balloon and they look like a little balloon and then they puff out to a purple flower like that. But you can see these top portions of it are spent. So basically I'm gonna trim off down to here and um, above all of them, just where the current blooms are, I'm just going to trim all this dead portion off. So let's get that done as well. Okay, so that looks good. The balloon flowers, they bloom all the way down their stem. So they grow to their full height. They produce blooms at the tip. Those bloom at the tip and then they continue going all the way down. So let me grab one to kind of show you. So you can see tons of blooms here, but then it blooms at every set of leaves all the way down. And you can see that this is a newer bloom as opposed to these are older blooms. So it starts new blooms. And then these become bloomed out and then it grows new ones, new ones, new ones, all the way down its stem. So I will still get blooms from this and it definitely looks way more tidy. Okay, let's head to the backyard. I got a few things to show y'all back there. Okay, we're back here on the back porch and my impatience are struggling big time um, due to the heat and then also due to spider mites. So I'm just gonna give them a real hard trim back they should push more blooms and more leaves. It's going to look pretty scary and sad, but y'all know how I am. I'm pretty cutthroat out here. So if you can't handle it, then you don't make the cut. So anyway, let's go ahead and get those trimmed back. Hopefully get this um, spider mite infestation under control and then potentially get some new growth, especially when the weather cools off some. Okay, I give them a pretty hard trim, but you can see there's already new growth below that is trying to push up. So I think this is a good call. I think the spider mites were just too far gone on this to really make a difference. And then I was over here trimming on my tomatoes and I was noticing a lot of leaves gone. And then I noticed this little bugger right there hanging out. Get a close up of him. So he's pretty big. I'm actually just gonna let him chill. I know y'all are like, what? But it's okay, they're not, these aren't making anything right now. These are just in survival mode. I'll let him, I don't see any other ones, but I'll keep an eye out. I'll let this one guy go. 
It's a little late in this. He's a little late in the season. Oh no, there's another one. Well, crap. Well, I might have to pull these little buggers off. Darn it. I like to leave them if I can, but two, two can demolish a plant in no time. So I'll get those guys removed. Okay, I pulled those off and then interesting enough, I had noticed last night that these mini bell peppers, something's been munching on their leaves and their fruit and I couldn't find what it was. What do you guys, do you think those tomato hornworms did that damage on a pepper? Y'all let me know if you've had that experience. We'll say pepper pants. plants are looking beautiful with the exception of this guy who's gotten eaten up by something. Okay, so the next area I'm gonna be working on is this amaranthus over here. And it's massive. It's going really, really well. But here's the deal. It's getting a lot of its new growth down here on the trunks. So I really wanna go ahead and cut some of it back and utilize what I can now, but then allow it time to begin growing for another round of amaranthus. So let's go ahead and get that cut back. It is glorious though. Okay, that's some serious trim back, but you can actually see the wall planter now, which is actually doing pretty well, um, considering I had a rough start on it and that I didn't water it for several days right after I planted it in 95 degree weather. So I gave it a really good trim back. And the goal of the trim back is, I mean, look how massive that stem is, but to trim it back above where you're seeing new shoots. So you see new shoots, new shoots right there, okay? So that's the goal. You can see I trimmed that one right there. It's got new shoots. 
that's the goal. Trim this one and it's got a new shoot right there and there, okay? And then it's gonna split off and give you a ton more flowers. This will be better for the plant in the long run because like I said, it's been trying to care for all of this. It's hot weather. Buffy, Buffy. Y'all, she can't hear anything. <laughs> but also look at this mass of amaranth right here. Isn't this beautiful? Let's have to do something with that. I'll go get that inside real quick before I go on to the next thing. Check out that amaranth. <laughs> I just stuck it in a vase of water real quick. So, so pretty. Okay, let's go do some more. Okay, this area is gonna be the last for today. I'm going to be trimming back these Bullet Allium, which is my first year with them, and I love them so much. Actually gonna keep these and see if they dry well. And then I'm also gonna be trimming back some of this Phlox just because it is done blooming, and I would love the plant to kind of focus on more roots and strengthening up its system for next year. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out, and this will be our last thing today. The humidity is insane. I uh, got up early to do this and I, I mean, within five minutes, I'm dripping, absolutely dripping. Like, huh. But anyway, you guys know I'm not a morning person, <laughs> but kind of getting to where there's no choice. It's getting dangerous to garden during the heat of the day. Um, so I've had to do this instead. So, but anyway, glad to get a bunch of that stuff pruned. There's still a ton more things that get need to be pruned, but I just want to show you guys a few of them what I was doing, how I was going about it, the ones that I just decided to prune and what they look like afterwards. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks y'all.